Hello, hello, good morning. Welcome to Coffee and Card. It's the last week of this round, which means this afternoon I have frantically got to cut all the kits for next week um, to get out for next week. Hi, Fiona. So hopefully you can hear me this morning. Wendy's on. Hi, Wendy. Hi, Val. Hi, Fiona. Hi, Anne. Hi, Lorraine. Everybody's just coming on. Ah, bless you. I hope she's, I bet she's real cute, Lorraine. Um, let me know that you can hear me okay. I did um, log on and it looked like my microphone was working on my phone. So hopefully all is good. Um, we've got eight people on. It's a little bit quiet um, this morning, which sometimes happens in the run up to Christmas because um, it is only four weeks on Sunday to Christmas. So, yep, yeah, loud and clear. Um, just on a side note, actually, tonight's Paper Crafts and Piano is a pre-record. Um, so we will be on and probably able to comment, but it, we did pre-record it on Sunday for you. Um, lovely card that I made for my niece. Have you seen my jumper? I've ruined it last week. I don't know if you can see that. Let me go like that. I've put, well, it might wash out. Um, I only really wear this on a Tuesday morning um, for coffee and card. I like to be on brand because it says the paper haven on it. So I really only wear it on a Tuesday. And uh, I had a pen on my desk and I put my arm on it. And look, it's done that. Um, so it may wash out. I know it's four weeks on Sunday. And the reason why I know, I always know when Christmas is every year because it's exactly six weeks from my youngest son Evan's birthday to Christmas. And a little fun fact for you, my birthday, well, <clears throat> Ross, my eldest, myself, Evan and Christmas Day, are all it's always on the same day, our birthdays and Christmas days. So when Ross had his birthday in June, which was a Sunday, I know then that for the rest of the year, my birthday, Evan's birthday and Christmas day, it's always on a Sunday. Try it, vanish, spray and soak. All right, I have got some vanish stuff and I've got some of that pink stuff as well. So I'll have a look at that. So yeah, it's the last week of this current round. Thank you to everybody who booked on for next week's. Now, a little side note about that. Um, normally I order on a Tuesday and it normally comes on a Tuesday, but because of the sale last week, the orders were busier and it's not due to come until Thursday this week. So I am hoping, hoping, hoping it gets delivered to my neighbour. I'm going to put a note on the door. Um, and I'm hoping to be able to meet people who collect on Friday lunchtime um, this week. So, but that's if it comes. So if it doesn't, I'll have to get it posted out to Quick Smart or sort something out over the weekend. Anyway, I will get it sorted. Um, oh, gee, I'm having a nice sleep. Right. Moment of truth. Hopefully you should be able to hear me. Now we've switched the camera. Um, please do let me know if you can. Oh, I've got my nice coffee as well. Look, done a cappuccino this morning. Got a nice coffee. I'm not having a biscuit because I'm trying to be good. Right. Now, please, sounds okay. Thank you, Fiona. So for those of you who did take part in this, you might be thinking, where's my envelope for week six? I've not got one. But you did get a big A4 sheet of shaded spruce, which is for this week's card. And in the pack that had your envelopes, there is a piece of polished pink ribbon, a stitched circle and an oval, as well as your card, your envelopes. Yeah. So Julie did know what she was doing. I just don't think I put a, a note in. So you might have been wondering where things were. I'm also not sure if you got some gems. I don't know if I put some gems in. Maybe I've just done those on mine. Um, so yeah, that's what we need for this card. Okie doke. 
Oh, your car's poorly. Oh, sorry to hear that. Well, but it's better than you being poorly. Let's look at the positives. Um, okay, so what we're going to make is I've done one like this before, but I think I folded this wrong because I'm looking at it thinking, oh, and it would have ribbon tied under it, which is through here to keep it closed. So imagine that was tied with the ribbon. Yeah, so that was tied round and it was tied there. Yeah. But I think I did it wrong because it opens like that and then like that. I think it would be better like that. And then it goes, yeah, like that. Because when it's open, it's, it, yeah, it doesn't look right. So we're going to do it the correct way. Right, let's get our card. If you want to craft along, grab a piece of A4 card. And we are going to pop the card in our paper trimmer. And we're going to pop it in portrait or vertically. And we're going to cut it at 14.8. So you can only get one of these from um, a piece of cardstock. So we might, we need this for, um, and use this for our card. So I'm going to, um, we're going to cut that 14.8. Oh, I've put up this the seal. There we go. Okay, so now move your cutter out of the way, please. And then we're going to pop it in the trimmer. We're going to score at 10. So score at 10. Yeah. And then we score at 9.5. I think this is right. Let me let me work it out. Make sure it works. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's right. So we scored at 10 from one end and then we came in and scored at 9.5 from the other. And then when we fold it, I don't know if you can see, we have this little overlap here. Oh, hi, Mary, which is nice because you can see some more of the paper and it opens up like that, like a trifold. Yeah, I nearly said like a trifold. Um, yeah. Oh, that's a nice cappuccino. Oh, hi, Barbara. Wow, we've got lots of people on this morning. Um, so I'm now going to choose some patterned paper and you can use um, whatever you've got left. You should still have plenty left. These are some of my favourite designs. They all work well together. I love this one from the, for the front of the card. I do love the stripes. I love the spots, just not on my face. And I do love that one as well. Um, so let's look at what we want on the front. I'd quite like something quite busy on the front, which would be that one. So that looks actually the perfect width. So yeah, it's nine. We want to cut a piece for the front, it needs to be nine by 14.3. They all need to be 14.3 in length. So for the front piece, yeah, I love them, Barbara. Is nine by fourteen point three. Ah, oh, thanks, Val. Yes, if you're watching on YouTube, a thumbs up would be appreciated. So that's for the front, and you just get a little border then. Okay. So then we're going to cut two pieces for here, but also we're going to pop a piece on here because you do see that there. And I quite like seeing this, the stripe there, quite like the stripe. What you can do is you can pop you can pop your piece in and think, right, do I want the pink popping out? Would I like the spotty? Yeah. Maybe that's not as dynamic. Would I like the stripey? 
and I think the striping is fabulous. So we need to cut 10, you might be on the last legs of your stripes, 10 by 14.3. Oh, hang on, is it 10? Oh, let me just measure. I think it needs to be 9.5. Yes, 9.5. We scored at 10, didn't we? 9.5. At least it's better to do it that way, cut it too big to start with than uh, have to add it. So, um, 9.55. That's for that piece. So let's just... So that is going to sit... In there. This is a really nice card that you could put photos on as well and you just see a little bit of it peeping out there which I love. It's very discreet but I love it. And then we need two pieces for this. Okay. You can use the stripes again if you want the stripes um, on the inside. But bear in mind we've got a very busy pattern on the front. So it will be like that. So I'd probably tend to do busy, non-busy, busy, yeah. So I might do that one and then I might do that. Oh, I think I'll have the pink. I think I'll have the pink. So we're going to cut these to 9.5, two of them by 14.3. So I'm going to use this one with like the sweeties on and the gingerbread men and the holly. And then I'm going to flip it and I'm going to use the other one. Right, let's go through that because I've done a lot of cutting. Let's move all the lovely papers out of the way so we can see what we've got. So basically to go through your papers, you need one of them that's 9 by 14.3 and you need three that are 9.5 by 14.3. We're going to go like that. And then there's one on the other side. So let's glue those on. That's lovely. That's a lovely idea, Wendy. And thank you for jumping onto um, Facebook for me. That's much more appreciated. So I'm just going to glue that down there. Glue that down there. Make sure you get the baubles the right way up. So that's going to go like that, yeah. And then we're going to glue our stripes to here. Oh, bless you, Lorraine. That goes like that, and then that goes over there. And just see that pop of stripe. Yeah, and I love it. So it opens like that. Okay, dog. So that's sort of the main crux of the card. What I would recommend if you've got some scrap white card, you could add a piece in here for you to write on. Um, yeah. 
I'm just going to see if I've got something in the drawer at the side of me that I could use. Yep, I've got a piece of a random piece of card that I might actually cut down and I can write on that. So we're going to decorate the front. And this is the one that I've done before, but I did it the wrong way around. Okay, so this is the front of the card. Now, what I'm going to do, I know you all um, can't believe how messy this is, but I have got some um, trees and things already cut. So I'm going to go in my little, little um, stamp set and find things because we should have some leftovers and I have got leftovers from things that we've done um, earlier in the sessions so we can use these and so I don't have to cut any more so I'm going to get all my previous trees out and have a look at them these are ones that I've, um, oh, in fact, these are ones that I've already um, cut, so I'm not going to cut any more because I think I've got plenty, yeah. So let me see what we've got, so let's move that out of the way. So I want to use that one on there, I like that one. Now what I've done with this one, Yeah, is I have taken some of the leftover polished pink card that I had left from another card and I've stamped it all over with these little um, star stamps to, to create that. So I could use that one. I also could use, and I think I might, do you remember on the, I think it was week four card and we did in fact, yeah. it was definitely a fall. Put it down here. And I did this card. And I, I showed you the two different ways of stamping. I did one where I'd cut it first, then stamped, and then one where I stamped and then cut. Well, this is a leftover. So I've already stamped that. So I'm going to put that to, to good use. And I'm going to pop that on there. And then I'm going to use um, one of these. Now, I think you will have plenty of these left over from last time. Or you could use all solid ones like that. It's up to you. It's up to you. But I like to use what I've got left. Okay, let me see what you're all saying. Yeah, exactly. I love the papers. But it's not an unhealthy addiction, at least. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to stick the larger tree and I'm going to have that in the background. I'm going to stick that down first. And then put that in the middle. Okay, and then this one is going to go here, and it's going to mm, actually. I'm just torn on what to do. I might put that one there, and that one there. Yeah, I think I'm going to mix it up this time. Collector's items, Wendy. So I'm just carefully adding some glue on here. And then that's going to overlap there like that. Where's my scissors? Oh, I've got my ruler actually. Come back. 
There we go. <laughs> Do you know what I saw that looked really nice? Um, one of my Stamping Up friends, she's from Canada. She she was over in America and you can arrange when you're a demonstrator to go visit the Stamping Up offices. And there's a room, I think they call it the Legacy Room, and they've recently redecorated it. And the walls are like papered with that sort of white brick wallpaper. It looks really nice. And they've got some open shelves. And on the shelves, they're framed some of the old DSPs and some of the original artwork that the designers did for the DSPs. And there's one, I remember seeing this one um, frame that's just got a piece of the peaches. You know, I love those peaches. I still think they're one of my favourites, those papers. I love those peaches. And um, yeah, they've, they've, they've got like a frame with the peaches in and all different frames. It looks fabulous. It looks amazing. Right, I'm now going to stamp in the oval. We are going to do some stamping and I'm going to stamp Happy Christmas. <laughs> oh, if I can find my stamp because of all these. Of course, I'm so messy. I found Happy. I can't find the Christmas. What have I done with it? I didn't use it last week, did I? I might have to use another greeting, you know. Oh, it's there. I need to I need to get these in an envelope. I'm telling myself off. That's far too unorganised and far too messy. Right. I'm giving myself a ticking off there. I'm gonna use shaded spruce. I know we get used to our paper, it's so good and double-sided. So the Christmas just fits in here. Sorry, I'm trying not to get my head on camera, so um, let me just get that stamped. Ta-da! And ta-da! Happy Christmas. Now I'm actually going to pop this over here, over the hollow area, because it's sort of going to fill that area in a little bit. But I'm going to glue it down. I'm not using foam pads, and there is a reason. And I will tell you that reason in a moment. So that's going to go over there like that. Okie doke. So let me bring the card in. Now what I am going to do first is I'm going to cut this down. So this was 10 by 14.3. So let me see how wide. I've just found a random scrap of card. I'm going to come in two and a half centimetres. So 7.5, 11.8. I do a lot of maths when I'm doing something up, you know. And there we go. So I'm going to do that. So I can still see the paper, but I've got a nice space to write a greeting. For me, the thing about the papers is we know that they coordinate with the inks, you know. We know that they coordinate with the ink pad colours and everything. And you, you're not going to have that clash. So that's why I like including like a quarter of a pack or half a pack in a class because it gives me the opportunity to include some papers and not a full pack. Right, what's going to happen here? We're going to put some pads at the bottom, pads at the top. Anyway, let's talk strictly. Did you enjoy Blackpool? Oh, Hamza, oh, Hamza opening Blackpool with his American smooth. What a guy. What a guy. 
think I might just pull an extra one there. And then you see the reason why I've left a channel here for the ribbon to go through. Okay, so what we can do first, what I would recommend is you write this now, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to turn this upside down. And I'm going to tie this round. You don't have to stick the ribbon down. Um, you can if you want to. But yeah, I just thought, hands up. Is anyone strictly was fantastic? You know what I'm going to say is I love to see. I think I don't know if you, if I used a shorter piece than what I gave you. Yeah, I gave you a little bit longer piece. So let's use that. That's one that I've cut down after I've tied it. I love to see. I'm a bit traditional. I love to see a ballroom dance at Blackpool. You know when you hear them talk about Blackpool. They rarely say the home of ballroom and Latin. They most often say the home of ballroom. Yeah. So for me, it's all about the ballroom in Blackpool. And if I was a dancer on the show, I'd be disappointed to be doing a Latin dance for Blackpool. But that's just me. That's that's just me. Because I'd want to be going around that whole floor, that big floor. And I've danced there many times. Um, and it is fabulous and the floor does bounce um, but yeah I'd want to do a ballroom dance I'm not sure I'm a fan of the extra dancers I don't think they need it um, and I thought Fleur was fantastic at what she did amazing but I'm not a fan of couples choice I'd, I'd rather see a ballroom dance but again that's me okay so then oh look at that bow it's looking rather good that's going to sit um, over our bow like that and we know that the bow will fit through um, the foam pads that we've assigned to it yeah I did see Shirley dancing on Instagram she did a samba with Giovanni every week she does a dance with Anton and um, she's amazing she's an amazing dancer and I I I know some people moan about her as a judge, but I really rate her. She knows her stuff. She knows her stuff. I love it when the judges came on dancing. And she did uh, some samba with Anton at the beginning as well. Okay, okay. There we go. I'm just going to see if I've got some little gems to add. Oh, thank you, Anne. Um, just seeing what I've got in my drawer at the side of me and I found some gems so if you've got some in your stash then I'm going to pop a big one on the middle one I seem to have a straw piece of Julia's hair attached to that one. Oh, it's gone now. Oh no, it hasn't. I can still see it. There we go. These are my favourite gems and I'm going to show you where they are in the catalogue because they are the best value. Um, let me find them. Let me find them for a second. You know me, I like to tell you the best, the best value things. Here they are. They're on, we'll look at the card in a moment. They're on page 142 in the item number seven. And they're called Iridescent Rhinestone Basic Jewels. Okay, and they're seven pounds, but you get 200. And you get, um, four millimeters, five millimeters and six millimeters. So you get three different sizes and you get 200. You know, we do have the basic rhinestones, which are 575, um, but there's only 140 of them. So I love to get these because they do seem to last forever for your seven pounds. There's a lot um, in there. 
So yeah, that's just my top tip. Iridescent rhinestone basic jewels. And they are they do offer a very good sparkle. And that's the larger size, and I've used the medium. I think I've used the larger size. Yes, Mark Ballas. I watched his, she shared it. I watched his Viennese waltz, I think it was. It was absolutely sensational. It was sensational. Okay, Doc. So that's this week's card. Um, my computer is telling me I'm on low battery. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do, I always do this at the end of um, round. I'm going to get all the cards out. Hopefully, I've got them all here. So, week one. I might have done this in the wrong order. Week two, I think. Week three. Week four, week five, and week six. What lovely bright retro colours. Um, I think they're looking good. Can you believe another round is over, round 25, and we start round 26 next week, which leads me perfectly into talking to you about round 27 now that doesn't start till the 10th of january but i know people will get bogged down with christmas and they might not be online as much and things like that i have had five bookings already for round 27 which thrills me to bits um i'd love to get to double figures for this one And of course, these are the papers that we're going to be using. And you're going to get half a pack included. This is the stamp set. There's dies as well, the lovely oval dies, and it's going to be gorgeous. And if you tune in tonight to Paper Crafts and Piano, I'm making a really lovely fancy fold for my niece, um, whose birthday it is today. So I'm making a really lovely fancy fold for Molly um, with these papers. 25 rounds, I know, where has the time gone? Thank you, Janice, for your lovely comment. Um, so, yeah, booking is open for this. I will be closing it off before Christmas because um, there won't be dispatching orders. So I will be closing off bookings for it just before Christmas, um, probably around the 22nd of December. Um, but I have had five bookings, which thrills me to bits. Thank you so much. I can't wait to make the cards with you. And that will be a six-week course. And then after that, I will be using something from the new mini catalogue, um, which I'm looking forward to using. So that's all. Shall we switch the camera over? Hopefully that's switched over. Um, thank you for tuning in this morning. I do hope you can join us this evening at half past seven. It will be a pre-record, but I should hopefully, fingers crossed, be able to comment along. Um, anything else to report? Um, I don't think so, but do look out for some um, bargains next week when we have the last chance list from the Christmas catalogue. Um, so do look out for that and hope oh no worries Fiona you can catch up I hope you have a lovely Tuesday um, and I hope that we will see you this evening for Paper Crafts and Piano it's a good one some lovely music um, slightly shorter tonight about six or seven minutes because I'd, I'd just got the card finished and it, there wasn't time to start something else um, so Hope to see you all this evening. And um, if you've got any questions about anything stamping up, then please just drop me a message and I'll be happy to help. See you soon. Bye.